<sighs> hey guys, Nitsa Gamer here. Uh, some good Joe. So, I'm pretty much in debt. Almost, not really. Okay, I have some interest on some things, and I have a camera that I have to pay off, all that sort of stuff, and all these bills. Uh, why do cartoons make fees look like a fun thing to pay off? I don't know. Anyway, this is Sonic Boom Vlogs, episode 24, Late Fees. So the episode starts off where Tails is inventing his new machine called the Reverse Polarizer, which we won't see in a very long time until Double Doomsday Episode 7. That's a long wait. And you have Sonic that is constantly interrupting him on duct tape and the batteries and all that. And yeah, Tails keeps his batteries up by the video games. I mean, I do that too. And um, it turns out that Sonic and Knuckles are... What the heck are you doing, guys? Activating hyper mode. Let's yeah! try to get the infinite jump glitch to work again! And so Amy Rose calls Sonic to ask whether or not if Sonic has given her book back to the library, and of course, her book is due, and that if Sonic doesn't give it back in time, then she'll have to pay late fees. So Sonic has to remember where the heck he placed the book, and yeah, there's a running gag where you have the fight with Dr. Eggman out in the forest where Buddy Buddy Temple was, an explosion happens. You have Sonic and Amy take a picture of themselves, an explosion happens. You have Sonic who um, forgives the go-go buzz for guilt tripping all the time, and what do you know? Explosion! And then he lays down by the beach and... Wait, wait, where's the explosion? Oh yeah, that's where I left it. <laughs> I, it's so random that it's kind of not even funny, but I don't care, it's funny. Now get going, the library closes in... Seven minutes! Plenty of time, not a problem. All right, seven minutes. I'll be sure to time that with the uh, duration of the episode itself. See if um, they actually get it in the library in time in uh, seven minutes. I mean, as of now, when Tell says that, the actual time is at two minutes and 30 seconds. And considering it won't happen until the end of the episode because it's a kid's show, we'll see how this goes. So Sonic runs all the way to the library and... After you! No, please, after you. I have all the time in the world. Oh, I thought the same thing when I was your age, Sonny. Well, why can't you just run around him, or at least jump over him? I mean, you're Sonic the frickin' Hedgehog. Did I ever tell you about the time I got a soda out of the vending machine without putting money in? Uh, no, we just met. Oh, it was the best day of my life. Well, hey, I hacked a vending machine once, and I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> and, of course, Sonic politely lets him walk by as he runs over and runs into Styx. And Styx seems to be building her own traps in case any aliens attack. And he goes over to Mad Burger because, pff, screw it, I'm going to have enough time. And it's not like I'm going to be wasting time with the few minutes that I have left. So you have Fastidious Beaver in front of Sonic, who can't make up his mind on what the hell he wants. I have a hot dog, but should I have a hot dog with sauerkraut or a hot dog with onions? Should I have a soda or a water or a shake? Oh my god, Mr. Beaver. Seriously, you are just as bad as Dr. Eggman back in Aim Low when he couldn't make up his frickin' mind when he lost his confidence. I mean, what, are you, like, secretly the same person or something? And so there's a whole rivalry thing with Dr. Eggman in line and Sonic in line. And when Sonic manages to get a chili dog, Dr. Eggman, of course, wants the chili dog just to find out they're sold out. And he wants some extra relish as well. So Sonic um, agrees that he'll at least help Dr. Eggman get his chili dog by running to the warehouse that is two towns away just to run into more characters. Good the f***ing God. 
Did I ever tell you about the time I got a free soda? Yes! Oh well, at least he's going to the next town. At least he won't run into for oh, f Do you mind if I go first? I'm in kind of a. Did I ever tell you about the time I found some money on the street? You gotta be. No, we just met. I used the money to buy a soda, so it was like the soda was free. What is it with the elderly talking about soda? You want your soda? Then go buy a freaking soda for crying out loud. I mean, what, did this not, like, exist back in your time? I wish I liked soda. And, of course, Sonic does succeed to get the chili dog, which, of course, he realizes that, oh, he wants the relish. So Sonic runs back into the f*** of thinking, Sonny? Today's the day. I'm headed home Sonic, to Sonic, just run soda. past him, push him out of the way, or jump over him, or do something for the freaking god. I mean, yeah, you can kind of already notice the problem with this episode. I mean, yeah, it's kind of running a one constant joke that there's always some sort of obstacle in the way that is making Sonic late, even though he could easily walk around these people or at least wait until he can get the book back to the library before he goes out to get his chili dog which yeah if he actually did do that then all the chili dogs would be sold out but regardless i mean it's just getting repetitive i mean is there at least something that is new whoa ah! gotcha alien you're not an alien really you think <laughs> okay, I will admit that was actually kind of funny. I mean, unlike Guilt Trippin' and Sleepin' Giant, where they were kind of like running on one constant joke, at least this episode has a little bit of variation with it, but very few. I mean, every time he runs into the elderlies, there's really no variation. So for him to run into Styx, and then suddenly Styx uh, manages to capture Sonic, makes it pretty funny. But hey, at least she can get him out oh, for the love of... <laughs> okay, I will admit his um, reason for being late with Sticks is probably the more funniest part of this episode. But don't worry, he's going to continue on and... Oh, for fuck's sakes. And he's going to continue on and uh, the chief of the Go-Go Buzz interrupts him. I have a flat tire and I'm late getting back to my home to feed my children. Can you help me fix it? Um, I have a book to return, then I'll come back. I promise. Two minutes, tops. Oh, that's okay. Growing children don't need nutrition. It just keeps them healthy and stops their bones from getting brittle. I'll just fix this flat myself. My sciatica is flaring up, but I'm sure I'll only be laid up for a week or so. You go return your book while I struggle painfully and injure myself. Huh. Okay, to be fair, I don't mind this character so much if this um, guilt tripping joke is used at least once. Because I will definitely admit the episode didn't really work as much when um, the go, -Go Buzz had their own episode and... They were constantly guilt tripping. At least the guilt tripping is, is used at least once in this episode, and it's not so bad, really. And of course, when Sonic does make it to the library, he actually forgot that he was originally supposed to get the relish for Dr. Eggman, so Dr. Eggman attacks Sonic for no consideration, to which Sonic and his friends arrive to save the day, but then they realize the book is missing, and Amy, rightfully so, gets angry with him. Okay, where's the book? You mean my book? The one you were supposed to return that you said was not a problem? Finish him! Seconds, we're fine! But it turns out Knuckles had the book all along because he loves his pictures. And when Sonic does return the library book... Okay, this is the moment where he returns his library book. So let's look at the duration of the time and actually figure out how late Sonic was. Now, according to Tails, it's supposed to take seven minutes until Sonic gets to the library, but in actual duration, it's actually eight minutes and 20 seconds. So yeah, he was actually over a minute late. So yeah, it kind of sucks when you have to consider that time. And the thing is, is that the episode never really focused on any other character except for Sonic. So yeah, the continuity with him being there in time in less than seven minutes is definitely botched and I don't think was put into consideration. And yeah, guess who runs the library? That's right, Fastivious Beaver. Well, geez, when you were at Manburger, you probably could have gave the book to Beaver and then just get out of there, or maybe get your chili dog and then get out of there and say, 
Screw you, Dr. Eggman. I'm not going to consider you after everything you've done. And yeah, that's... I pretty much gave away the entire episode. And honestly, I don't think there's really much I can say about this episode. And yeah, as a whole, this episode, in my opinion, is average. I mean, there's really not much in this episode that really gives any kind of new aspect to the Sonic Boom universe that makes it interesting. I mean, it's pretty cool when you have Tails working on his invention while you have Sonic and Knuckles experimenting with his flotation Siri device that we've seen back in episode 16 and 19. Now, of course, the whole concept of the episode is, I don't know, kind of a weird concept. I mean, there's really not much that is at stake. I mean, Amy would only have to pay like $5 or something, depending on how much the late fees are, and so there's not really too much of a crisis going on, and the thing is that the episode really over-exaggerates a lot of the elements. I mean, the over-exaggeration with Sticks, you know, capturing the aliens, you know what, that's suitable for a character, and that part worked. Or the one with the chief uh, guilt-tripping into Sonic fixing his wheel, that works as well. Or even in some of the moments where you have Dr. Eggman that is going up against um, Sonic for no consideration of getting the relish for his chili dog, Again, that actually works really well. But if I have to be honest, this episode does get pretty repetitive for the most part. I mean, it's kind of like guilt tripping where you have the Gogobaz constantly guilt tripping and then you have Sonic who is constantly stopping in front of the elderlies. Like, I will definitely say it would have been fine if you ran in front of the elderly at least twice and then they ended it like that. But yeah, it seems kind of repetitive and the episode as a whole is... Not bad, but I wouldn't say it's really good either. So yeah, it kind of just feels like an average episode for me. There's really nothing that unique that I can actually say that stood out for me, but uh, I wouldn't say it's an episode that was like, you know, one of the worst episodes ever or anything. I mean, um, it's definitely better than Sleeping Giant and Guilt Trippin', which are by far my lowest rated episodes. So, yeah, I think as a whole, this episode, in my opinion, I was kind of stuck between two verdicts. It was either going to be a 6 or a 5, but I think I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. Now, the reason why I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 is because, well, I was originally going to give this a 6 because I kind of enjoyed it the first time, but I found it kind of repetitive. But watching it a second time, I realized that there was really nothing that made me feel different. Like, there was nothing that was more funnier or less funnier watching it again. So, yeah, because it doesn't really have that much of an impact watching it a second time, like uh, some of the episodes previously, yeah, the, the episode just doesn't really leave that much of an impact. It's pretty much a filler average episode, so a 5 out of 10 is my final verdict for this episode. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the 24th uh, vlog episode of Sonic Boom, and when we return, we will get on to episode 25, God damn you Bills, I always forget whatever the next episode is called, Into the Wilderness, that's the next episode, so I'll see you guys in the next Sonic Boom vlogs. Goodbye, and please click on the ads, they help me pay this stuff off, no they don't, they don't really... Do sh really. Bye.